Welcome back, one and all, to another Cedar Flags in what's probably going to be a shorter episode. If not shorter, let's just say more focused episode. We're really only doing one thing in this episode, and that is the transfer track and its station, I guess we could call it. Um, yes, this is something that I've been talking about for a while. I've never done this in a game before, so this was all a learning experience for me, which was pretty cool. I did a little bit of research, which I guess I'll talk about a little throughout this time lapse here, but for those of you who may not know what a transfer track is, a roller coaster is basically usually a closed circuit, so there needs to be a way for the operators to get new trains and cars on and off the track. So the transfer track breaks that circuit and allows the trains to move on and off and usually into a, I'm gonna say station, I'm not sure if that's the technical term for it, but it's a little bit of like a storage station and that is off the track and usually nobody from the public is allowed back in there. So that is what we are building in this episode. I am actually fairly pleased at how it came out. I'm pretty excited to show you guys toward the end here how it ended up. But yes, like I said, this was all a new thing for me. So I went to YouTube and I researched as any good YouTuber should do, what to build. And I got a lot of videos from like Cedar Point and the Six Flags of the World just of transfer tracks in action because coaster enthusiasts love everything coaster. So as soon as they are in, you know, in the front of the line and they announce that they're gonna be adding a train, they pull out their phone and they record what's happening. So there are actually surprisingly really good videos of transfer tracks in motion. So that is what we built this off of. And you just saw me go through and do a little bit of modification to the track itself before we had our final break run kind of on an angle to the station, but in order to fit this whole build in here, we had to go through and adjust that. So now the brake run comes straight out of the station, no more turn, and it gives us a little bit more room. So now we have some room to work here. The last turn is a little bit tighter now, which I don't think affected the ratings whatsoever. I mean, it may have very, very marginally like, affected the ratings, I don't think it went down. It may have went up because now the final turn is a little bit more tight, so you're pulling a little bit more Gs with the little extra speed you still have on the coaster toward the end of the ride there. But we have built all that and you're seeing me now go through and get these tracks set up. So in the end here, we have three separate coasters. Yes, the game thinks we have three different coasters here and that is because the S bend that you saw go in there, that's gonna have to be moving. So I'll, I guess I'll explain that a little bit later. And then of course you saw that straight run that we're eventually going to be adding brakes and some drive tires to. Um, that is where we would theoretically be storing the other cars and getting the mechanics to be able to take the cars on and off the, the rides and they can go back and work on them. Really, I don't know how that works, so I don't know if I built this properly. I'm sure if any of you worked in a theme park, you could probably let me know. But yes, this uh, this station that we build here is about as long as a train, a little bit longer, uh, I, I think. I really hope, I don't think I checked that honestly, but it should be longer than a train and a full train should be able to go into this station and hide out there. So that is the theory here. I really wish this game had trains um, as like a prop. So it'd be really awesome to be able to put a third train in this little hut that we're building here and have it sitting there. It would just add to that realism. I also would really like, I think I've, I may have talked about this before, but I've, I would really like um, the train seat for a coaster as a prop so we can set that at the front of the line. A lot of parks are doing that now to make sure people can fit into them comfortably before they hop on the ride, go through the line and like, you know, figure out they can't ride it after they've spent two hours in line. That would suck. So yeah, a lot of these theme parks have an actual seat from the ride that you can go at the front of the line, sit down, buckle in, make sure you're not going to be uncomfortable. And if you're not, you can, you know, skip the ride. But that would be really cool to have in this game. I really wish they would do it. And to be honest, it's like the trains are already modeled. 
So at least to have like ploppable train assets, we should be able to get those fairly easily. Again, I am not like a video game developer, so it may not be that easy, but I would assume if you already have the models in the game, you should be able to just make them an asset, but I don't know. Maybe if we ever got modding, which I don't think is going to happen, we would get that kind of stuff. People would just rip it out of the game. I don't know. Anyway, what we've been doing is I've been rambling on and checking things off my wish list. Um, we've been building this tiny little substation. I really don't have any idea what to call it. I'm going to refer to it as the station, I guess. Maybe a storage bay. I, maybe the storage station. Let's just stick with that. That's a lot of S's, though. But, um, no, we've been doing a little bit of theming around it. I didn't necessarily want to build, like, this super in-depth build where it's got a ton of components to it. From the outside, it just had to look good. So we're taking a lot of influence from the station, the main station building itself. And we're using a lot of the same parts to just kind of theme here. So... From the outside, it looks like it's, you know, well built. It looks like it fits. But when you look at, like, the top section, there's really not much going on there. And that's because there really wouldn't be that much going on up there. Just basically an area for the train to rest and get worked on and taken off the track. And that's all it that needed to be up there. So none of the public will ever go up here. This is just for our mechanics to go in. It'd be kind of cool to see, like, a mechanic actually roam around in there. Didn't really think that one through. Maybe I could have made that happen, but... Uh, I don't know. Um, this was very typical of what we had already for the main station. So you're seeing another kind of A-frame roof design that I've now raised way up there just to work underneath it. And then a lot of the same elements, like I said. And of course, we needed to add a door for our mechanics to be able to get in there. I really wish you could recolor that door. It's very, it's a great door because there's like a security key on it but it's not colorable, which is really weird. It's been around since the alpha, actually, so uh, I don't know. I think there could be a few more packs of just generic doors and windows and that kind of stuff added to this game. It would be kind of nice, but anyway, what you're seeing me do right now is just go through and finish up the roof section here. I wanted to keep that influence of the overhanging roofs on either side, and then, of course, we have the wooden logs that run along the bottom edge and of course along the main apex of the roof and then a couple little styling things on the side and really it's a simple building it is really simple not a lot of prop count here which is a good thing for us because i my my fps is still it's struggling uh, to say the least i mean and i've been building like as sparingly as possible i haven't been doing these like massive custom roofs or anything but it's still, I'm getting probably 10 to 15 FPS when I'm playing the game, which isn't great, and it's going to get worse as we build more, so I don't know. I may end up switching the series to, instead of going into the live portion at the end of the video, maybe doing some cinematic shots if I can figure that out. Not for this episode, but maybe in the future. Not really sure about that. I guess you guys could let me know when we get there if it's working or not working. Or you guys can just deal with the terrible FPS throughout the live portions, and we'll just keep doing that. But anyway, what we've been doing is just detailing out a little bit of the landscape work, and now we're moving on to one of what I think is the cooler parts of this build, and this is the support structure for this transfer track. So this track, like I alluded to earlier, actually moves. The S-Bend and that straight section that are on the actual track itself would move and slide closer to what is the camera now and that's how the track would get into position and allow the train to go on and off and i believe it's automated for a lot of these rides too so it's just the operator has to hit the button and it all kind of does it for itself and the new train just kind of comes on on its own and it is all set up really awesomely but we needed to build that so you're seeing a little bit of some tweaking to what we had already down here we're actually going to be removing a little bit of the concrete and continuing that bed, I figured that with the way this support structure needed to be set up down here, it really doesn't make sense to have this as like an entrance to this area. So in order to get over to this area, you're gonna have to go through the maintenance area and a lot of this will be explained in the live portion. But uh, you're seeing some rails go down here and this are, or these are linear rails that uh, the support that I have now placed horizontally 
would be the mechanism that this whole thing rides on. So this is all automated. Like I said, there's a motor or hydraulic system that moves all this together. And we're just kind of tidying this up. And I really like this. It, it looks, I think, fairly realistic. I, I would hope um, these little linear rails are definitely a good addition. It's just the railroad pieces from the trains in the game, but it fits really well for this kind of thing. Um, you're not allowed to color them, but honestly, even if I could color them, I don't think I would. They are a very mechanical piece and they need to be made how they're made. So this is, I think, a fairly accurate um, representation of a transfer track system. I guess anybody who's worked in the theme park realm could let me know if I did a good job here. I really hope I did. I, I did a little bit of research, like I said. But um, yeah, I think this comes out really well here. And just to finish this time lapse up, we have to go through and rework some of that uh, landscape work like I was just talking about. We've cut this down. We're going to then take all of the landscaping and extend this bed out again. One of you know my favorite things to do in this game is landscaping for some reason. And uh, yeah, that's gonna about finish this up. And I will see you guys over in the live portion. All right, guys, we are live here in Cedar Flags, and we are looking at the beautiful new transfer track substation storage bay area of our new ride. And it adds such a nice, um, like, realistic feel to this area, I, I have to say. I mean, when you're on the main path over here, you barely see it, which is actually by design. We have a lot of trees over in the way here. You're not really supposed to be seeing all this kind of mechanical stuff back here, but if you look past the trees a little bit, you definitely do check out all of the inner workings of our transfer station, and it's really cool. And actually, if you're on the queue itself, you get a great look at it. And it's just, it adds such a realistic little feel back here. I'm gonna keep saying that. Um, yeah, so we have these main support structures down here and the linear rails. And then underneath those, we have these other supports that I put on horizontally. Uh, I really couldn't figure out any better way to do this. But in theory, this, this whole rail section would slide this way. So you'd have this uh, part of the main track sliding all the way out here. And I've kind of made sure that we'd have enough room to clear like all the trees and foliage over there. And then this part of the track would slide in. You saw me actually aligning this in the time lapse. So this moves about this far, which moves this about to here. And then you have a connected path to then get on your next train. And we are pretty tight for space back here. And that is one of the reasons why we had to actually adjust the uh, track itself for the ride slightly. Um, this is probably going to be the final form of this ride and unless I find something glaringly obvious that we need, need to smooth out or fix, this is gonna be it. So, yeah, I guess this was a fairly focused episode. Like I said, not as long as usual, but in the next one, we're going to be going back here and doing some of the scenery work on the back side of the queue. You guys left a ton of great comments in the last video for ideas for this, so probably going to be working in a bunch of those. But yes, that's about going to do it for this episode, guys. If you liked it, leave me a thumbs up on the video. If you disliked it, thumbs down, of course. Go ahead and check out my Patreon page if you'd like to get your name featured in the credits at the end of my videos, and I will catch you guys in the next episode.